48 hours, 24 papers, and every single AQA A-level paper between 2017 and 2024. Yes, that is right. I have finally completed every single AQA A-level past paper. And yes, that does work out as two full days of sitting exam papers. Let's just say my hand may never recover from this. So let me share with you what I discovered and why it might just change how you're going to revise for your exams this year to get more marks. Hey everyone, and welcome to Miss Estrick Biology, your online biology teacher who has been teaching biology since 2009. And I'm gonna be sharing with you what I have learned from sitting every single past paper. And if you want even more help with mark schemes, specific terminology, and if you want to have a look at these work solution PDFs or videos, I'll put a link in the description below so you can check out me completing every single past paper. Now I'm guessing a lot of you are probably thinking, why on earth would you choose to subject yourself to have to sit through 48 hours worth of exams when you've already done your A-levels? Well, it's because it's literally my job to help you to get the best grade possible. And one key way for me to do that is to sit every single past paper and share my detailed findings so you don't have to. However, I'm gonna still recommend you do some of them, which I'll come to later on in this video. Now I say it was 48 hours worth of exam questions because it was. I did 24 papers, they're two hours each. However, I did not do it in 48 hours straight. I think that's probably quite obvious, or at least I hope it is. So I've been spending the last eight weeks doing three exam papers per week. And the insight and experience I've gained from this is huge. So let me share with you my key findings. The first key thing I noticed was the level of challenge in the papers throughout the years varied massively. Now, of course, that is partly subjective. What I might think is easy or hard will be different to another student. But generally speaking, I tend to have a good grasp of what students would find easier or harder from my experience of teaching students for so many years. And yeah, some years were a lot harder than other years. And to an extent, that's reflected in the grade boundaries, but not massively. Now, what I did notice though was if I found one paper in a year particularly challenging, there was usually a paper that year that I found particularly easy. So it did balance out. And you might have heard lots of students talk about that in 2025, the exams that happened, because so many students found paper one incredibly hard. But then when they sat paper two, they said it was probably the best paper two they'd ever seen. So it did balance. And I actually found this when I was doing 2019. 2019 paper one, I think is probably the hardest paper one out of all the ones that I've sat. But then when I did paper two, I did think, oh, this one's probably one of the easier ones. So it did balance and that's possibly why the grade boundaries didn't massively fluctuate in those years. So why that's useful to you? The key thing there is knowing that, number one, if you go into paper one and it feels ridiculously hard, then you're probably gonna get an easier paper two or three and it will balance out, so do not panic. And the other useful thing is, I now know which ones are the hardest papers for you to sit. So what I would definitely recommend is 2018, 2019, I would complete all three sets of the papers from those two years, because I found those two particularly challenging. And that did actually get me thinking, were the papers harder pre-COVID? So far, it looked like they were to me. Maybe 24 and 25, the challenge is increasing again, but there was definitely a dip in the level of challenge over the COVID years. And they did say they were going to do a little bit of leniency in 2022 because they were transitioning back into exams post-COVID. The next key finding then, each series typically has two to three evaluate style questions on both paper two and paper three. Now this makes sense for paper three because it does explicitly say you will get 15 marks of critical analysis. And that is the types of questions. Do you agree with the conclusion? Evaluate the conclusion. And I've got a whole video on evaluate questions if you do need help with this, by the way. But paper three, you get about two to three to make up 15 marks. You also got that on paper two. So if you know you find those questions difficult, make sure you practice them before your paper two and your paper three. They didn't seem to come up on paper one. A couple of the exam years had maybe one evaluate question, but most paper ones didn't have evaluate. They were paper two and paper three. My next finding, which I've actually talked about this before, and it's linked to the practicals. You won't necessarily explicitly be able to tell on paper one, two, and three, oh, I've just completed a question which is on required practical four or required practical 
five, whichever one it is. Because most of the time, the practical questions, which by the way, they say a minimum of 15% of your A-level will be practical skills assessments, but it isn't always really obvious that it's linked to a required practical. More often, it's linked to a particular apparatus or technique, which you need to know, which might link to one of the required practicals. So bear that in mind. Yes, revise the required practicals, but do not overlook the apparatus and techniques. And I actually did a video on this very recently, which if you haven't seen, absolutely watch that so you know how to revise for that minimum of 15% practical questions. My next discovery, which let's face it, we all knew this already, but those mark schemes are so, so specific. And yes, I knew that already from marking students' work, but sitting down and doing all of the papers in this short space of time has really brought it home to me just how picky the mark scheme is. And there are some where I look at it and I think, well, I suppose that is justified because you do really have to phrase it in this way to make it explicitly clear the point you're trying to make. And you do have to know this exact key term or biological molecule. But sometimes, I fully am on board with how specific the mark scheme is. But what I did find was there were a few questions, not many, but a few across all of the papers where I looked at it and it might have been a three or four mark question. And I'd written everything I could possibly think of. And I still could tell I was missing a mark. I didn't have enough. And I then checked to see the mark scheme afterwards and think, oh, that was a mark. How on earth was someone meant to know that they wanted you to say that? Because the question didn't explicitly ask that and there's nothing that I can see even hinting at that it's just it was a fact linked to this topic so I do think there are a couple of questions where it is just a matter of what was inside the exam writer's head when they wrote it and what they wanted but as I said there were very few questions where it did really annoy me that it wasn't explicitly obvious that they wanted you to say this as well and what you do have to bear in mind is if I felt like that and if you feel like that when you do a question probably almost everyone is so no one's getting that mark so it's basically a redundant mark but if you want to try and help yourself with things like that when you check through your answers maybe just throw in a few other key things that, you know link to that topic just to really have that backup and insurance but why it's then useful and I had said at the beginning of this video that yes I've done all the past papers so you don't have to I don't think it's necessary for you to do every single past paper because time is tight I mean if you can definitely do it because I found it so valuable but if you don't have the time at least do some because because the patterns I started to see, which I was aware of already, but it really brought it home. There are some marks that come up every year and even almost on every paper. So concepts to do with tertiary structure and complementary shapes within proteins that can link to so many other topics. Knowing about enzyme substrate complexes, breaking bonds, forming bonds and naming what those bonds are and the use of ATP to release energy. Those were so common across all of the papers at some point in the exam. So in summary, here are the key things that I found. Common topics repeat more than you realize. Maths and data questions are vital practice. Even I found some of these tough and by practicing every single a maths question in there it has really boosted my ability to do the maths. Your timing will improve massively once you've done a few full papers so it's absolutely worth it and seeing the command words over and over really trains your exam technique. Now doing every single past paper will take you 48 hours and then if you go on to the 2025 papers later this year when they become unlocked that's an extra three hours as well so you probably don't have a spare 48 hours unless you start now so you could potentially start now to make sure you do all of them but if you're not planning on doing every single past paper ever what I would recommend is you try to do at least three years where you do every single past paper because that will then give you the value that I gained on a smaller scale but hopefully enough to boost it and if you are only going to do three sets of past papers, the three I would recommend 2018, 2019 and 2024, because that gives you a good variety in terms of some of the hardest papers and a good mix of topics that have come up. Now, if you have got more time than that, I highly recommend also 2021 and 2023 because they have some really tough math skills in that you really want to be trying. 
So was it worth me spending 48 hours of my time going through every past paper? Absolutely it was because it was so useful for me to be able to share this feedback with you to get an even better understanding of papers and the mark schemes. And because I'm not going to be using all of that knowledge plus my past paper analysis document to create you a set of practice papers this year. Completely unseen questions using all of this knowledge to make you the most accurate set of practice papers possible that I can from the past papers and the past paper analysis. So keep a look out for those because they'll be coming early in the new year. And if you did want to see me completing all of those past papers, then don't forget it's linked in the description. But that is it for this week and I'll see you in a video very soon.